Today's Father's Day, and I'm going to speak on the theme, Fathers on Fire. Fathers on Fire. Uh, in Psalms 139, verse 16, a scripture that you may question if it has any relationship to it, but I believe it does. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them ever came to be. Someone noticed that the word father appears in the dictionary just before the word fatigued and just after the word fathead. <laughs> so to all of us fatigued fathead fathers, happy Father's Day. We're glad to welcome you today. Americans and the English people speak English, but often has very different meanings by the same word. For instance, bonnet to Americans, it means a hat. But to the English, it means the hood of a car. So raise your bonnet and check your oil. I don't think that would work here in America, do you? I'm afraid that we read the Bible in the very different interpretations in very much the same way. But the author had intentions and purpose in writing the Word of God. God intended to say what has been written, and he accepts the responsibility of every word that is written in the Bible. He does not hold back, nor does he retreat from any statement that he makes in the Word of God. I'm glad for that because it gives me a sense of consistency and safety. But if we were to take a survey of any of our congregations and ask our men, do you perceive yourself as being the divine design of God, created to be his image in life. I predict that most of us as men in the church today perceive ourselves to be the product of our dads and moms, not of the Almighty. Secondly, I believe that we would say that our abilities were inherited through our family gene pool, not from the sovereign hand of God. And thirdly, I believe that we would say our ceiling for success and significance is set within the confines of our bloodline. We can't go beyond that. However, God spoke a very different and contrasting word on your birth, on your abilities, on your ceiling for success. Our text says you were woven together in the depths of the earth and your God's eyes saw that unformed body before it ever happened. And he knew every day of your life before any day began its journey in expressing your life and living. So your birth and your abilities and your ceiling for good and for success is ordered by a divine creator's hands. And it's not limited to your finite personality, your ability to do good things. God said, I was involved in the most intimate beginning and I put my name on you as a product of the divine. And before you experience one day, I am involved in your life. I am involved in your expressions. I am involved in your interests, your abilities, and your potential. God is involved in your life. I saw on Facebook last night a little video of a, 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 a doe deer giving birth to two fawns and how 
those funds came into being and what that dough did immediately, turning around and beginning to lick those funds and bring life into their being. And it wasn't long, maybe a couple of minutes until they were moving and living and having life. Now, I ask you, did that doe learn that in birth 101? Did she get that from her parents? There's an instinctive hand in God in nature. And the instinctive hand of God in you is moving your life and giving it divine potential, not just human and natural potential. So God is involved in your life, in the expression of your life, in the interests, your abilities, your potential, everything about you. God is involved in all of that. That's why Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says, bring up a child in the divine way. When he's older, he'll come back to that. He'll know that. He'll embrace that as the nature of God and the source for his life. Is it a hat or is it a hood? You and I have to decide what we're saying and what God is saying. And does he mean it? Is your life as we perceive it or is your life as God perceives it? Is it limited to just how you see it? Or is it opened up to the wonders of how God sees it? In Psalms 139, verse 16, it says, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them ever happened. So I know and you need to know that your life your present life was ordained and calibrated and calculated before you ever thought of one day. God made it all happen. Humorous anecdote. Boudreaux and Thibodeau were deer hunting. They killed a massive buck. They were dragging this buck out of the thick underbrush when they came upon a game ranger. He complimented on their kill, but suggested that their task would be easier and faster if they'd go around to the other end and take the buck by the horns and drag him by the horns instead of dragging him by the back legs. There's less resistance, said the ranger. Boudreaux said after switching and doing that, you know what? He's right. The other end is much easier dragging. Thibodeau spoke up and said, I agree, but we're getting farther from the pickup. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so you and I have to decide which way we're going to be dragging. Are we going to be dragging towards the pickup or away from the pickup? The choice of trusting God as opposed to trusting one's own conclusions leads to a better life. Drag in the direction God wants you to go. It'll lead you to greater fulfillment, lead you to more divine destiny. So what will you choose, a hat or a hood? Will you admit your choices are less than what God has in mind for your life? Will you admit that you need to turn around and drag in God's direction? And, and understand that God has been involved in your life all along and he is even now in this morning's service. If we surveyed our audience today, I'm convinced we would be shocked to see the percentage of men who would not be happy with their perceived identity. I'm not, I'm not that happy with who I perceive I am. They would say, me, divine, no. Me, divinely ordained, no. I don't see that. I don't, I don't get it. 
We see ourselves less than God's gift. But God said, you are who I make you. I put my divine name and identity on you. God said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Isn't that great? God puts his artwork to work on you, creating you with purpose and with order and divine significance. We see ourselves unable to do significant things. Our life is on the average, on the mundane, on the, I've got to do this today. It's the normal, habitual things. But in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, it says, everything is possible to him who believes. So none of us are limited to our gene pool, to our bloodline, to our family tree. God wants to make us more than that. Our Lord has established as the son of the most high. That's who's overseeing your life. The Lord will give him the throne of God forever and ever, and he will reign forever. Luke 1 verse 32, do we accept the sovereign reign is the question. Do, do we include that in our definition and our identity? We see ourselves unable to do significant things. And we also see ourselves disconnected to this biblical identity. We simply don't see the image that God sees. If we did, we would lift our sights much higher. We would lift our hopes much higher. We would lift our faith to the heavens. Because our vision is blurred, our confidence and our faith is impacted. Because we don't have good, clear vision of who we are and what God has made us to be, we reduce our hopes and our expectations. And we do that in order to protect ourselves from failures and disappointments. If we don't, if we don't see and expect that we're going to do something, then we don't get disappointed if we don't reach that. If you don't step out of the boat, you'll never experience walking on the water. But you may never experience sinking, you think, too, if you don't step out of the boat. I'll protect that side as well. But the truth of the matter is, it's just as possible to sink in the boat as well as it is out. You can sink spiritually in the boat as well as physically outside the boat. So sinking isn't the question. Faith is. I want you to see a life principle this morning based on God's word, eternal truth. This Father's Day needs to remind you that the Father of heaven is overseeing your life, watching over you giving you your life identity and perspective. You are known more for dragging your life in the right direction than you would be for dragging it in the easiest direction. It takes intentionality and commitment to live a life for God. Anybody can drift. Anybody can drown. It takes intentionality to move your arms and start swimming and get out of the condition you're in. There are four things that God does not have that you do and you need to give God. Number one, your appreciation. You have appreciation in your life that belongs to God and you need to give it to God. God cannot have it without you giving it up. Expressing thanks to God today is your gift to God on Father's Day, saying to you, Lord, I give you the highest gift I have. I give you my serious appreciation. The Bible says, do not boast, give thanks. Thanks humbles one, expresses humility. It 
expresses recognition. It expresses a sense of admission. Proverbs 6, 17, the Bible says, the Lord hates haughtiness. He doesn't, he doesn't agree with the spirit of haughtiness. He accepts the spirit of appreciation. Do you appreciate God this morning as you ought to? It's the one thing you can give that God does not have. The second thing you have that God does not have is your attention. Your attention. Romans 12, 2. Fix your attention on God. Fix your focus on God. Don't let other things become paramount and just destroy your attention on God. Like the Bible teaches us, we ought to give first place to God. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek his kingdom when? First. Seek his kingdom first. Then all the other things in life, cars and houses and clothes and food and relationships, all these other things will come after you put God first in your life. So God would love to receive the gift of appreciation and the gift of attention from you today. The third thing God does not have it, you have to give is your affection. Your affection. Hosea 6.6, 6, God says, I don't want your sacrifice. I want your love. I want your devotion. I want your affections. God is moved by your sincere affections. And it touches his heart. I was shaving yesterday. And Kay came in and said, did you see your Father's Day card? I said, no, I didn't. And she said, well, look. To your right. And right in front of my face to my right was my Father's Day card on the wall. Only it was a, a board with a plaque with words that expressed her desire to tell me how much I meant. Uh, it, it was a moving thing for me because, you know what, we get, we get caught up in monotony in our lives and we lose the creativity to express something in a different way. Thank you, Kay, for waking my mind up. I was in a daze. But affection is something God wants. Seek God with your heart, with your soul, with your might. Let me tell you something. Relationship trumps ritual, doesn't it? Every time. If you just express your affection to one another and the most to God. Fourth, last, is God does not have and you have is your abilities Whatever your gifting is, God has given it to you. And he desires you to give it back for his purposes. To give it back for his uses. God wants you to surrender what he has put within you. In fact, Romans 12, 6 says, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. Turn that grace or that gift over to God. There's a law that says, use it or lose it. We must give our gifts to God and our abilities, when they're put in the hands of God, can do wonders. And we can do much more with God's hand on us than we could ever do by ourselves and with our own might and our own strengths. Psalms 37, 4 says, Take your delight in the Lord, and he will give you the, the desires of your heart. God wants 
you to be happy. He wants you to be fulfilled. He wants you to find a sense of high significance, and he will give it to you if you will simply delight in the Lord. What is your desire this morning? To be a man of God? To be a person that God created? What must I do to assure that I will experience a God-ordained life? Three things, and we close. One, confess him as the father of life. Confess him as the father of life. Secondly, admit our need of his plan, not ours. Admit that his plan is so much better than ours. And thirdly, accept him for your life. Accept God by simply saying, I confess, I admit, and I accept you as the Lord in my life and the Lord over my life. Be a father on fire, burning for Christ, burning for heaven, burning with divine significance and divine identity.